we'll move on to the next module which talks about the memory system. We'll discuss the basic concepts here. The first is the maximum size of the memory. The maximum size of the memory that can be used in any computer is determined by the addressing scheme. So let's say our system has 16-bit address line. Now, how many addressable locations can this particular system have? 2 to the power 16, that is 64 kilobits of memory. If our system has 32-bit address line, then the maximum size of the memory of the system is 2 to the power 32. If our system has 40-bit address line, the maximum size of the memory is going to be 2 to the power 40, that is 1 terabits of memory. So the maximum size of the memory is determined by the addressing scheme. Next is the connection between a memory and a processor. Before moving on to the description, I would like to give you a review on the major registers that we have in a processor unit. We have a memory address register, MAR, which holds the address of the memory. Next is memory data register, MDR, which stores the data that has to be written to the memory. So, um, look at the memory unit here. What is the maximum size of this memory unit? It depends on the address line. So, if you have a k-bit address line, the maximum size of the memory is going to be 2 to the power k. Let's transfer n bit of data between the memory and the processor. This transfer happens over a processor bus. This processor bus consists of three lines, address line, data line and control line. If we say we have a k bit address line, that means the maximum size of the memory is going to be 2 to the power k. If the data line is of n bit, that means n bit of information can be transferred between the processor and the memory. The control line coordinates the data transfer. It has certain signals which helps it for that. Like example, a read or write signal. If this read or write is set as 1, that means a read operation happens. If this signal is set as 0, that means a write operation is going to happen. Another signal is memory function complete signal. So once the memory is done uh, doing a particular operation, it will assert a memory function complete signal. So let's see when a processor reads the data from the memory, what are the different steps? So the first step is address is placed on the MAR register. When processor wants to read something from the memory, that, that particular memory location's address should be stored in a processor register. Next is the control signal that is read or write signal should be set as 1 because that denotes a read operation. Now how does the memory respond to this read operation? The memory will uh, place the particular data in that uh, location. It will place it on the data line. Also it will assert a memory function complete signal. Once the processor sees the memory function complete signal, it will place the data, what is there in the data line, to a memory data register. This is how a read operation happens. Similarly, the write operation. When processor writes a data to the memory, first it loads the address of the location into the MAR register. Processor wants to write something to the memory. That address should be placed in the MAR register. The data to be written should be placed in an MDR register. Also, the control signal read or write should be set to 0 because 0 denotes a write operation. Next, we will see certain measures which determine the speed of a memory. There are two measures, memory access time and memory cycle time. Memory access time is the time uh, that elapses between initiating an operation and completion of a particular operation. For example, if you want to read something from the memory, so the time between the read signal and the memory function complete signal given by the memory, that time is called as memory access time. Next is memory cycle time. It is a minimum time delay required between initiating two successive memory operations. So the minimum time between two read operations is called as memory cycle time. So based on the speed of measure, 
especially the memory access time. A hierarchy is designed. So it consists of several units, a processor unit, a secondary cache, main memory, and a secondary memory. The fastest unit of the computer system is a processor. Compared to the processor, the main memory is very slow. So in order to transfer something between the main memory and the processor takes a long time. To avoid the speed gap between the memory and the processor, a new memory called as cache memory is introduced. The speed of the cache memory is approximately similar to that of a processor unit. The lowest level is the secondary memory like disk storage. So in this hierarchy, the speed will decrease and the size will increase from top to bottom. So the secondary memory will have the highest space uh, the, and the processor unit will have the highest speed. Next, we'll move on to the semiconductor memories. So semiconductor memories are available in a wide range of speed. So their cycle time uh, ranges from 100 nanoseconds to less than 10 nanoseconds. That is the uh, time between initiating an operation and completion of an operation uh, that can be even less than 10 nanoseconds. So the semiconductor memory is broadly classified into two categories, volatile memory and non-volatile memory. So what's a volatile memory? A memory which holds the information as long as a DC power is applied. Random access memory is a volatile memory. RAM can be divided into static RAM, SRAM and dynamic RAM, DRAM. Again, the classification for a DRAM is asynchronous DRAM and synchronous DRAM. Non-volatile memory can be classified into read-only memory and flash memory. Read-only memory has different classifications like programmable read-only memory, erasable programmable read-only memory, electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. We will go into detail about all these uh, memories in the coming lectures. So again, in the basic concepts, we learned about the uh, the, the maximum size of a memory which is dependent on the addressing scheme. We discussed how a data is transferred between a memory and a processor. We also discussed on the speed of the measures like memory access time and memory cycle time. Depending upon these uh, speed of measures, a memory hierarchy is designed. In, the, uh, in this design, you can see which unit has the highest speed and which unit has the uh, largest size. So the rest we will discuss in the next video.